Why hello there, Anxious Cynic back again for part 5 of our Mindimator 2 tutorial series and today we're going to cover the basics of how to use particles. So to get started we got to spawn a particle object, so I'm going to go to the workbench, come down here to particle spawner, and something that Mindimator now has that it didn't always have before is presets. So as you can see I can click on any of these and you'll see in our little preview that the preset is changing so you can basically just spawn in one of these and if it's what you need you're good to go but uh we'll get a little bit into how to customize these we'll just try maybe the snow particle to start off with and you'll see there's no real preview here to speak of so let's go ahead and create that put it in our scene i'm just gonna go ahead and center that up and one thing is we can't see what's going on with this particle system. All we see is the actual object in the scene. So I'm going to go to Project Properties, drop down to my library, and you'll see that we have our particle spawner. Open Particle Editor. Click on that, and then we get this new panel up here. And you'll see that we now have this visible uh, region here. And that's because this particular spawner is set to spawn in a region. So as you might imagine it's snow meaning it's made to fall down and this is on our ground plane so we're just gonna drag this on up and we should see some particles but not right now we're gonna have to hit play and there you see we got our snow particles falling down into our scene. Now another thing to note is the bounding box is set to ground meaning that when these particles hit the ground we can dictate what they do. So in this case we have a couple of different things that are going to be happening. One is on collision with bounding boxes set for the destroy particles option. There's also a number of other things like when particles are animated you can have it destroy them when the animation ends if it's not a looping animation. Uh, we can set it so when it exceeds a certain amount so by default this is set to 2000 per minute so if it goes above that then the particles are deleted and then after a time duration so if the particles spawn and then they last for a certain amount of time then they're automatically deleted if we didn't have this uh, destroy on collision we turn that off and we scroll on down here and we got our snow particle so we have our particle object and the kind of default settings to that and then we have basically the actual particles themselves so if I click on that then we get a whole nother host of options and this is really the uh, meat and potatoes of our particle spawner here. We can change the actual texture of it, the sprite you might say. So if I come in here and get close up on one of these and I say let's go to glitter and these are kind of the, the default templates because we have it set to kind it is a sprite template. We can also go to a sprite sheet. We'll cover that in a minute but we have these default templates of some of the uh, particles you might see in Minecraft. So let's just do something a little more visible. Oh, look at that. It's, it's snowing hearts. It's beautiful. I feel moved emotionally. So let's scroll on down here and we have bounce. And bounce means what's going to happen when it hits a bounding box. So right now it's set to zero and you'll see. Let's uh, so let's just scrub forward to a place where they're hitting the ground a little bit more obvious and uh, you see how they're just hitting the ground and stopping and sliding. Let's turn this bounce factor to say two. And now you'll see that when they hit the ground they're bouncing up and that's because of that bounding box setting. So if I come up here and the ground is set to Z. This bounding box being ground is set to Z. So let's set that to say 15 and we hit play and you'll see that they're not actually going all the way down and hitting the ground anymore. And that's because the bounding box is set to 15. So this is like 15 pixels or whatever. Let's change it to 32 and you'll see that they're bouncing higher up. So you can adjust where that bounding box is. Even if it's set to ground, that just means this whole ground plane is your bounding box and then that's the level at which it's going to be bouncing. Okay, so let's say we've uh, got this particle system set up and we've got things where we want it to be, uh, but we don't really want the snow particle anymore. What we can do is actually, instead of having to create a whole new particle system and, you know, changing the location of it, and I, not that that would be too difficult, but let's just say we want to just change what this is. We can come up here. You can see we have these buttons up here. One is clear particles, so you can see if I hit that, it gets rid of the particles. That's not keyframed or anything, that's just to kind of clear your view. Uh, and we have import particles and we have export particles. So let's say you made a custom particle thing, you've adjusted a lot of different things and you would like to be able to use that in the future. Click on export particles and you will save a particle preset file 
that you can then import into future projects. Uh, but if we go to import particles, so these are those preset files that we saw when we were spawning in the uh, particle object here. Let's just pick another one. You can see this is .miparticles, so if you had exported one, that's what it would export as. And this is the particles default folder that comes with Minimator's installation. So if you save yours in here, then it'll appear in here. Otherwise, you just navigate to wherever you saved it. But in any case, let's go ahead and import this one. Hit open, and you'll see that now our particle system has become a different preset. So let's go ahead and come up here. I'm going to go to our transform properties and zero out that position again so that we can see what we're working with. Hit play, and you'll see that we now have this nifty little fire animation. So let's go back up to our particle editor. If you happen to lose this window by accident somehow, uh, clicking on this isn't gonna bring it back up. You have to go back to your library, open particle editor, and we're back. All right, so basics of the particle editor. So right now we have it on constant. You'll see that as we play, it's just constantly spawning and destroying particles over and over. If I change this to burst, then what'll happen is we'll get all those particles. This is set to 1500, bursting out all at once, and it does not continue. So for this one, obviously we want it to be on constant and you know, it all depends on what kind of particle system you need to have for whatever your particular use is. So for this one, it's just spawning right around the base you know, object of the particle system here. We don't have a bounding box and we don't have spawn and region. So if we turn on spawn and region, then you'll see that we now have this region that we can see. And if I hit play, these are all happening within that region. We can also reduce the size of this, so we bring it on down. Then we've got a smaller region. And from there, I'm sure you can figure out all the different things here. And we also have a path as a region type. So we can actually have a path in the scene and this will cause the particles to spawn along that path. But we're just gonna keep things simple here and move on. We have our bounding box as it was before set to ground, but we can actually make it the spawn region. So if I turn on collision with bounding box, makes it delete the particles, then you'll see they do not go outside of this bounding box. Alternatively, I can make this custom and you'll see that we have a square and we could adjust the size of this to uh, make a custom bounding box to delete our particles. So if we go down here, you'll see that there's actually two different sprites for this one. We have smoke and we have fire. And both of those can be selected independently and have their adjustments made to all their settings. So one thing you'll notice is there's actually animation applied to these. And this is, uh, like I said, it's a template. So it's kind of doing all this on its own. But if we wanted to customize something, if we made a custom sprite sheet, or if we just want to use the default one, we can go to sprite sheet for the kind there and we can change these settings. So if I go to this one, that changes our fire to, if I can actually navigate the scene here, to these uh, these little doodads there. And that's just one single particle texture selected. But if I wanted to animate it, what I can do is click and drag, bring it over like so. And it's kind of hard to see there, but this one says start and this one says end, I think. And you can adjust this down here where it says frames. It's 128 to 135 because that's the actual number of frames that's in here. And that's the point at which those frames are in the sprite sheet. Does that make sense? And now that we've got that selected, it's gonna animate between 128 and 135. And you'll see now that we have these animated textures. Another thing you'll notice is we have frame size. So if we go to sheet two over here, this is our explosion particles. And you'll see if we tried to do this, we have just part of it being selected. So we actually need to increase the frame size so that we can encompass these textures. So if I go to, I think this is probably 32 by 32. And then I click this and drag, you'll see that we now are encompassing the entirety of these explosion particles in the frame. So that allows us to do that. And now you can see that our frame is from zero to 15. And if I hit play on that, but it's not really happening fast enough. So what if we need to adjust the speed? Then we have animation speed. It's at five frames per second. If I change that to 15, let's say, back this up, play it, and you'll see that that's happening much faster. Happening so fast, in fact, it's not even getting away from the particle spawner there. So let's put it on 10. And there we go. Now we got this happening. So you'll see that this is also kind of happening very uniformly. These are all the same angle and whatnot. So let's see if we can adjust the angle of these. 
So right here we have rotation, sprite angle, and I'm gonna actually turn on use random value and it's zero to 360. So if I hit play on this, you'll see that they're now all facing different directions. Since we use a template, the scale option has already been adjusted here. So this is made to go from 0.75 and then it changes by negative 0.375 over time. So I can change the initial scale. I could make it 0.2. And then when I hit play, you'll see that uh, those are very tiny, teeny tiny. And then I can actually make them get bigger over time. So let's make it uh, two there. So we hit that. You'll see that they're getting extremely big very quickly. And let's go ahead and adjust this. Let's make it a uh, one. So it's going to double in size over time, basically. Hit play. We're getting some very interesting results here. We also have trajectory here. We can go to launch angle and speed. And this is determining how fast the particle moves either initially when it spawns or over time after it's, you know, moving along in our scene. So I'm just going to focus on the speed for the moment. And I can actually drop down the X, Y, and Z setting. So if I do like so, then we can change which way this spawns. So like, let's say I want it to just go in one particular direction or two directions. I'm going to turn off Y by making this zero. And let's say this is kind of random. It's gonna put it towards the negative 10 on X and positive 10 on X. What if I just wanted to go in one direction? So I'm just gonna have it go on positive 10. And for Z, I don't want it to go down. I want it to go up. So I'm just gonna have it go positive 10 on the X, positive 10 on the Z. We actually probably need to make that a little bit more exaggerated. Let's do 50 and 30. Now let's hit play. So you'll see it's sending it more in the positive X and the positive Z here. If I make this even more so, then it's gonna send it up and towards that direction. This is probably not the right particles to really show this with. Let's see if we can adjust the size of this. Let's go to 0.5 and to change to just one there. There we go, seeing a little bit. So it kind of is initially coming out at that angle, but what if we want it to kind of uh, go a little bit more in that direction? So we can add a force or we can multiply it. So uh, let's zero out the Y. Let's multiply the X by one and the Z by one. And you'll see now that it's kind of sending it a little bit further. It's multiplying that force by one over time and we're getting a little bit more action going on with the particle after it's initially spawned. We can uh, add even a little bit more. If we uh, go to an add force there, and you'll see that it is even more so. So this is kind of looking almost like a very odd stylistic smokestack coming up, blowing in the breeze. So if we come on down here, we have color. And this is well, set up for fire, so that's why we got these kind of nifty colors here. But if I change this, say I want it to go from white to a uh, dark gray, then when we hit play here, you'll see here it says mix color gradually. So what it's actually doing is you have white to this gray here that I have, and then it was red down here. So if we actually change this back, let's, let's make it a blue this time. And we hit play, it's taking that white to gray and is slowly, gradually mixing it with blue. And then the mix time is four. So if we just do two on that, then you'll see it's happening a little bit quicker and we're getting more of that blue before the particles are destroyed. Alternatively, if we turn that off, then we're just gonna have those two colors mixing. It's not gonna change it to the blue or any other color we set there. And this is done uh, by a random value. So if I actually turn that off, then we can just have the particles be one particular color without any uh, mixing or anything really going on. All right, so finally, we're gonna note the orbit attractor option here. So I'm gonna turn that on. And so if we then go up to our particle spawner, like transformation properties, we come down here to particles and then you'll see that we have attractor. So right now we don't really have anything else in our scene. Let's go ahead and bring in uh, just a block. We'll just bring in a, a block here and just plop it up there like that. And then we have attractor. So I'm gonna drop that down, click on our grass block and you see here that this is actually a key frameable option. So before that, nothing. Uh, and then after that, it's gonna use the attractor. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually move this over so we can see what effect it's having. So I'm just gonna bring that over there. And then we hit play. Nothing's happening at first. Once we hit this keyframe, you'll see that the particles are being pulled towards our attractor there. So if I select this keyframe, let's turn up the force. Let's see if we put it on 10. Let's see what that does for us. 
Whoa, zooming over. So let's actually get rid of this keyframe, bring this one over, and let's have our attractor move around a little bit. So let's come just like so, maybe maybe bring it down a little bit. And I'm also going to reduce this force. It seems a little bit too much. And let's hit play. And you'll see that our particles are now being attracted to it but it's also not really working as much so let me actually bump that back up a little bit and you'll see that it's kind of being forced along by our attractor there and it is orbiting it but these particles actually aren't lasting long enough we'll make some changes here get rid of that so basically it's just going to delete them at this point once they uh exceed a certain amount so we don't overload our computer all right let's hit play and you'll see that our particles are swarming our attractor. Yeah, I guess if you had like some seagull textures, you could make a pretty interesting little beach scene there. <laughs> All right, so I simplified our scene a little bit just to cover one more thing before we call it a day here, and that is the keyframeable properties of your particle emitter. So from your property panel here for your particles, we have a few different options. We have spawn particles, freeze simulation, clear particles. So for instance, let's say we play it a little bit and at frame 80, for whatever reason, we want it to clear the particles. We're gonna put a keyframe there and then that's gonna get rid of them. And then when we go to frame 150, let's have it go to spawn particles. And then say at frame 190, we're gonna go to freeze particles. I'm actually going to turn off the spawn here. And I think we may want to actually turn off spawn particles for this one where it's going to clear particles as well. Let's hit play and you'll see that our particles spawn like normal. Boop, they clear. No more particles. They spawn again and then freeze. And then now we have like a matrix effect. Ooh, bullet time. So that's going to do it for today. I hope this tutorial was helpful to some extent for you. Hope you learned something. Maybe you can get started on using particles in your scene. There's probably some more advanced things we could do, but I just wanted to kind of cover as thorough the basics as I could. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, maybe we'll get back to it in the future video. In any case, thanks for watching. Bye now.